My name is Sally, and today we're going to be talking about immigration through Ellis Island. This is a very important part of our country's history. In the late 1800s, the federal government of the United States had very little control over the flow of immigrants coming into the country. On January 1st, 1892, Ellis Island opened as the first formal immigration station. However, required medical inspections on immigrants were harsh, and conditions at this new entry point were not ideal. Within its first 10 years, personal accounts of immigrants' mistreatment began to be shared, garnering the attention of government officials such as William Williams. He was appointed as Commissioner of Immigration by President Theodore Roosevelt from 1902 to 1905, and again in 1909 until 1913. After encountering the stories of immigrants and their mistreatment, he realized that immediate change was necessary. He, in his time as commissioner, he helped pass three acts of legislation, fired corrupt medical inspectors, and helped advocate for the passing of stricter laws on terms of who could enter the country. Men like Williams and individual stories told by immigrants helped set the precedent for various legal reforms over the previously unregulated system. Most immigrants did not have to stay at Ellis Island for more than a day, but if there are any issues with papers or sicknesses, they could be detained for months on end. Not only that, but if trachoma, an illness of the eye was suspected, they would take a button hook and lift up the eyelid, causing great pain and sometimes damage just by this procedure. Also, immigration laws kept many out of the country. Frank Sargent, one of the first commissioners of immigration, once wrote, Ellis Island has been the place for harboring vultures who preyed upon the immigrants and people began to look upon it as the hellhole of America. Although there seemed to be no hope for people for immigration through Ellis Island, things did eventually get better for immigrants such as Faye Linsky. My name is Faye Linsky, and what I experience at Ellis Island is like nothing I ever experienced in my entire life. Before I even arrived, I was on the boat for months. It feel like years. On the boat, my daughter contracted the measles, and so when we arrived at Ellis Island, she was taken from me. They tried to explain to me why I did not see my daughter, but I understand little English, and I don't understand what they say. When they inspect me for illness, they take a metal thing and lift my eyelid. This hurt me greatly. Not only that, but I was not allowed to see my daughter. In army bar barracks, one on top of each other, 50 women in one room, never allowed outside. I was there for so long. Oh, we play chess, play cards, we eat, go to the corridor to eat food, that's it. For months on end, it feels like years. The people I encountered at Ellis Island made me think twice about living in the U.S. If people at Ellis Island would treat me and my doctor like this, how would the rest of the U.S. treat us? Honorable sirs, my name is Mr. William Williams, and I am the new commissioner of Ellis Island. Immigrants' mistreatment has not only brought my attention, but other government officials as well. This is why I am here. I am here to end the abusive treatment of immigrants and strictly enforce the law. I would like to get started right away. As I, the first thing I would like to do is get rid of many corrupt workers. As you know, the naturalization process is very sacred here at Ellis Island. In order, to, in order to not let any further disease enter the country. As some of you know, 
I had some of my most trusted colleagues and friends go undercover to see which workers were carrying out these illegal practices, such as exchanging naturalization papers for money. This is not okay. As you know, I am one who favors very strict immigration laws, but I also believe that everyone should be treated with respect and decency, regardless of where they come from. I wish to put up signs stating that everyone should be treated with respect and kindness. I also believe that the conditions at Ellis Island are not ideal. I would like to plant shrubs, put up awnings, and other things to give this place a more welcoming feel for prospective citizens. I am also one who favors very strict immigration laws, and I know that not everyone agrees with my, with my approach, but I must nevertheless ask you to pass from a habitual and concentrated to a new and wider point of view, not to the extent of believing that selection of immigration is good, but to the extent of seeing that it is a proper one to be considered. I know that not everyone agrees with this, but without proper ex execution of present laws, it is safe to say that thousands of additional aliens would have come here last year, but these laws do not reach a large number of immigrants not of, who are not of this class, yet generally undesirable because of unintelligent, low vitality, or poor physique, able to perform only the lowest of the low jobs and the cheapest kind of manual labor. The cities are located almost exclusively in the cities by their competition tending to reduce the standard of living for those already living here. It would, be quite ac it would be quite accurate to state what proportion of last year's immigrants could it, could it be classified as undesirable. I would say at least 200,000 could have stayed home. Not even those clamoring for cheap labor would have missed them. When I come to the U.S., I met many people. One of which I met, his name was Maris. I met him while working in the U.S. He wanted to bring his son to come live with him, Bing Wen. But because he was from China, they no allowed him to come here. They say, no Chinese allowed in the U.S. This makes me very sad, because I know how much he loves his son. Not, he was not the only one who had issues. Many people I met want to bring family, but the U.S. said, no, no, you cannot come. This, this hurts me greatly. Why can't everyone come to the U.S., regardless of race or where they come from? This makes me very sad. Mr. Williams played a very big role in helping improve conditions at Ellis Island. While he was commissioner, he helped pass three uh, laws of legislation. Le le yeah, three laws: <laughs> the Immigration Act of 1903, the Naturalization Act of 1906, and the Immigration Act of 1907. However, being commissioner was not always an easy job. He was one who favored very strict laws in terms of regulating the types of people that he thought were fit to live in the United States. He was under a lot of scrutiny from the foreign language papers in New York, politicians, and the public. In response to this, he resigned as commissioner in 1905, but he was requested to, turn in 19, to return in 1909 by President Theodore Roosevelt. People realized that without strict laws set in place, immigration was going to be hard to regulate. Upon returning, upon returning to Ellis Island, he continued to improve conditions. He set up fines for anyone who did not adhere to 
to have $25 and a train ticket to his or her final destination, giving each new immigrant a plan upon arrival to Ellis Island. Proof that his work did not go unnoticed, after his resignation in 1913, he received this letter from President Woodrow Wilson. I wish to express my appreciation of your conscientious and peculiarly intelligent service in handling one of the most onerous positions in the government service. Sincerely yours, President Woodrow Wilson. So this is evidence that his work did not go unnoticed. Although he was one who helped advocate for some for, for laws that helped keep some of the certain types of people out of the country, his main goal was to improve conditions at Ellis Island, even if some, of, if some people did not agree with his aggressive approach. We can see the evidence of that today. After resigning as commissioner in 1913, the amount of immigrants entering the country decreased, and this was due to the laws that he helped advocate that were set in place for the types of immigrants that were deemed fit to come to live in the United States. Although the immigration system today still has its weaknesses, it is regulated with rules and reforms. When, William, when Mr. Williams came into power, he realized that immediate change was necessary. So in conclusion, the long-term legacy of Ellis Island today and the individual stories told by immigrants helped set a precedent for various legal reforms over the previously unregulated system. Thanks for joining me today on this tour of Ellis Island. I hope you all enjoyed.